In the next couple of minutes, we're going to take a look at uh, some surface modeling tools that we have in Solid Edge ST4. Now to do this, we're going to use the hand mixer and we're actually going to build the body around the actual hand mixer. Now to get a better idea of what this is supposed to look like, we actually got some drawings in from an industrial designer that we brought into Solid Edge and you can kind of see that from each view whether it's a front view or the top view or even the right side view gives us a really good depiction of what uh, they want this to look like now to further uh, understand we can also go ahead and include the 2D sketches that kind of represent the internal components and again from the front view we can kind of see how these components are supposed to fit into the design we also have them for the uh, top view and finally for the end view. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change our uh, assembly display configuration to that of the hand mixer part which puts on our industrial design uh, drawings back on but I'm going to uh, come over and just simply in place activate into this part where well, we've already kind of started the design by building some 3D curves uh, and by building those curves we just we just built those curves off of those sketches from the front view we were able to place them and then from the top view we were able to uh, just kind of create the curves along the sketches and then of course from the end view we were able to develop uh, these sketches kind of get the general shape of it so what we want to do is go ahead and continue the process of building uh, these surfaces. I'm going to go to the servicing tab and we have a command called blue dot and basically it does what it says. It creates a bi-directional uh, connect point between the curves and basically all you have to do is just kind of step around and select each curve and it, build, and it creates a blue dot and makes a connection between the curves. So I'm going to step around the top side and get those connected and then I'm going to just come down to the bottom side make sure these are all connected as they should be and then we want to connect the center you can see how the curves move to touch and connect to each other now once those are completed we're ready to develop the surfaces we have a command we call it blue surf and basically what that allows us to do is it prompts us to uh, click on a point sketch or edge or curve chain so we'll just start selecting our curves and develop this first surface and then we can come down and select the bottom curve for the final surface now that gives us the general shape but you'll notice that we uh, you know our surfaces aren't really following these curves that we have on the side and those are what we refer to as guide curves so while we're still in the command quick bar kinda steps us through this process and gives us all of the options uh, for this particular step we're going to use the guide curve step and you'll notice the surface updates as I select and accept each guide curve so let me uh, select each one of these and you'll notice how the surface updates and then I can select the third one and the surface pops in to those uh, to conform to those guide curves now that the uh, surface is created we might want to modify this surface and basically we offer two different ways of doing that one is to alter the curve or by simply selecting the actual um, blue dot where those curves are connected so I'm going to go ahead and use this dynamic edit tool and I'm going to move the triad out of the way. Now I can certainly grab uh, this blue dot and move it anywhere I want. I can also uh, lock into an axis. And for example, I can locked into the Y axis, I can grab that blue dot and I can pull it out. And you'll notice it kind of looks like a local edit. It's just pulling where that point is connected. And that's because I have it set to local edit for each curve. Now if I undo that and then select dynamic edit again, lock into that uh, direction, but I can come up and I can change that to shape edit and you'll notice it highlights the curve giving the user some feedback as to which curve they're working with. I'm going to set that to shape edit and what that allows me to do is pull this out and yet the system will try to maintain, SolidEdge will try to maintain the shape of the curve. 
So we'll just pull that out a little bit to give the internal uh, side of this surface a little bit more room for the internal components. Another thing that we can do is we can also modify the curve, which will in turn modify the surfaces. And from the top view, if I want to grab one of those control points, you'll notice the curve updates, but it also pulls the surface a little bit. And I just want to adjust a little bit, give the, again, a little more room on the internal side of this part. Once we're done modifying the curves, I'm going to go ahead and hide uh, the sketches. And let's also hide the blue dots. And at any time, you can turn those back on. Now, over here we have several um, sketches, and I'm going to turn on the Mixer Profile Sketch. Again, this is a sketch that was just created uh, in 2D, uh, kind of to get the uh, general eye shape of the hand mixer. So what I want to do is I want to project this back curve onto the body and in the direction, I'm just going to use both directions because I don't really know where the curve is in relation to the surface. And then what we can do is use that curve to trim away the excess material we don't need. So I want to remove the material in the outside. And you see now how that kind of conforms to that 2D shape. Again, the shape that was developed from the industrial designer sketches. Now another way to do this is to create a surface using these three curves. And then once that surface is created, we can trim away from that using that body, bottom surface. And again, we're going to remove the material from the bottom side, giving us the shape that we're looking for. Now we can come over in Pathfinder and turn uh, different things on and off. And so I'm going to go ahead and turn off that mixer profile. Now, one other thing I want to do is I want to be able to mirror this to the opposite side, but I don't want a sharp point at the top. I really kind of want some space in between. To achieve that, I'm simply going to create a parallel reference plane off of one of the base reference planes, in this case the front. And I'm just going to pull it off about, say, 10 millimeters to the front side. You notice how that intersects that surface. Again, using the trim option, we can very quickly remove the material from the inside. So let's go ahead and hide the uh, reference plane. And for this curve, we'll go ahead and hide it as well. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a uh, command that allows us to mere copy this particular body to the opposite side using that front reference plane that was in the center of the part, giving us the gap that we're looking for. With that gap, we certainly will have a lot more room for the internal components of our mixer body. Well, we're getting closer, and what we need to do is develop another surface that follows the contour top shape of our model here. In order to do that, we also need to have a curve developed that takes into consideration the front curve of this body as well as the side curve. In order to do that, Solid Edge has several curve options, and one of those is called Cross Curve, where we actually develop two uh, curves to create a single cross curve. So for the first curve, we're just going to go to the top view. And I like to area up so that we can kind of see what we're working with. And what I'm going to do once we get into the top view is just develop a 3D arc, an arc by three points. And just by selecting the endpoints, and then once that arc is created, I'm going to actually just convert it to a curve. And you'll notice that it is now a curve, and it actually acts, edits like a curve. Then what I want to do is I'm going to create tangency between those surfaces and this curve using the parallel tangent vectors option.
and you'll notice it develops that first curve for us. Now it's prompting us for the second curve. So in that case, I'm going to use the front view. And for this particular uh, curve, I'm just simply going to include this side face or side edge of the surface. And then I'm going to extend it up past this surface. Once that's done, we can finish out. And by using those two curves that we developed, it created a cross curve that follows the contour shape of our surfaces. Once that's done, we want to go ahead and develop another surface. Using the blue surf command, simply identify the two edges of our surface and it develops that surface for us. One thing that we can do when we're creating blue surface is go into the options and change our tangency control to tangent continuous. We want it to be a very smooth surface between those surfaces and you can see how it changes that for us. Another thing that we can do is incorporate that 3D curve that we developed by creating uh, using that as a guide curve. We'll just simply identify it and accept it. And once that's trimmed away we can finish uh, the command and now we're ready to go ahead and close off the rest of the model. So we've got our three surfaces developed so let's finish up by selecting the bottom side edges and developing the surface for the bottom again using the same cross curve or edge we can select it to close up the, the bottom side and then finally we want to create the blue surf on the back side and then using the guide curve option will select the back edge of that surface to close that up. Now our surfaces have been developed for the basic shape of the body for the hand mixer. Again using the surfacing tools in Solid Edge this is uh, very easy to modify and edit through uh, uh, through the blue dot and uh, of course creating the blue surf with several different options uh, for creating those surfaces makes it easy in Solid Edge. What I want to do now to finally to uh, finish this up is to go ahead and stitch all of these surfaces together to make a solid. So just by fence selecting I can accept it and tell it yes go ahead and make it a base feature and Solid Edge makes that a base feature solid model that we can work with to continue building uh, the body for the hand mixer. What I'm going to do is close and go back to the top level and turn that on and you can kind of see how this body that we've developed pretty much fits the outline that the industrial design gave us in his sketches. So we've got a really good start to the design of our hand mixer body.